Ishomanian legionaries hand in hand. Class Zero destroyed the jammer aboard the Imperial Dreadnought, temporarily restoring the use of magic and creating an opportunity for cadets. Like, I love everything in this game. <laughs> yes, that's great. For cadets like Machina and Rem to launch a counteroffensive, realizing the danger of the situation, Komi quickly returned to her MA and reactivated the second jammer, but it was too late. Class Zero arrived on the scene and made quick work of the device, destroying Komi's MA in the process, foiling the Empire's campaign to recapture the Academia. Having grown up in the same village, Makina and Rem have been close friends for most of their lives, but life eventually led them in different directions. One year ago, however, their paths reconverged and the two found each other once again by pure serendipity. Before war broke out in Orient, Agito cadets would often train by participating in combat simulations against their classmates. During an oh that sounds familiar anyway <laughs> during an experimental interclass drill, Makina and Rem were selected as representatives for their respective classes. Neither one could hide the surprise they both felt at seeing their childhood friend for the first time in seven years, having to square off in combat at that. From that day forth, the two picked up right where they left off, spending time together before and after their lectures. And although Makina and Rem were initially assigned to different classes, fate brought them one step closer when the administration transferred both to class zero. Oh jeez. Is that? Well, okay. 17, 5, 3. Twin Daggers. This well-mannered and kind-hearted girl recently transferred into Class Zero from Class Seven. Rem is a terrible liar. And even though she insists otherwise, try as she may, she is absolutely unable to fool her closest friends. Friends in childhood, she and Makina maintain a playful academic rivalry. To date, she has outperformed him on all written exams. <laughs> That's funny. Students begin their life at academia as trainees. Those deemed as having potential are promoted to Agito Cadet and trained to become Saviors Orients. Cadets also receive a number of enticing freedoms and privileges, so trainees are encouraged to strive for excellence. The administration then divides the cadets among classes 1st through 12 in order to better hone their skills, and each class is distinguished by color. For example, before they transfer, Makina wore indigo with class second. Rem used to don a pink cape in class seven. However, though, oh, through the efforts of Dr. Rishia al Rafia, sorcery managed to create a special team of cadets outside of the class framework at Academia. This elite group, known as Class Zero, wears crimson capes to symbolize a vermilion bird that defends the Dominion. Legend has it that several Classes Zero have existed in Academia's past, but no records exist. And none, and none alive today possess any first-hand information about such a group. Over the course of their training, the current Class Zero visited Academia with Dr. Al-Rashia on two separate occasions. Although they spent most of their time at a remote facility away from the main campus, the 12 members of Class Zero would not escape the prying eyes of their fellow cadets. Many students took note of the heretofore seen crimson capes and rumors of a mysterious new class spread like wildfire throughout the school. It's just how it is at school. Fun facts. Arisha al Rashi's name seems to be a reference to the author of Necronomicon. There are various other H.P. Lovecraft references in Rubrin. Huh.
in 833RG, Dr. Arashna took the 8-year-old ace under her wing and flew him off to a special facility at Academia. And there she raised him and he began a vigorous training program focused on combat and magic. Nine years later, Ace joined Liberation of Rubrum and officially registered a Class Zero Pedestrian. Cool exterior, mass bit of a reckless streak, but he means well in all he does. In this world where memories of the dead are erased from the minds of the living, Ace is one of the few who can empathize with those who suffer pangs of loss and shed tears for the fallen. A rather sensitive boy, Ace occasionally finds himself humming the song that Dr. Al Rashia used to sing to him when he was younger. Wait, that's it? Okay. Sorcery Division took Deuce into her their custody when she was a mere seven years old. Quickly initiated her training, she demonstrated a natural talent for casting defense magic, a talent she put to good use in the Rubrum Liberation of A42. She enrolled in Class Zero. Oh, 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 this song, I swear, it's putting me to sleep. <laughs> Not long after the operation, warm and welcoming, so Deuce is respectful and <laughs> my sister woke up and understanding toward everyone she means. No, you've been sleeping this whole time quiet. Everyone she meets. However, she is also quite serious and straightforward, and her stubborn adherence to what she believes is occasionally met with frustration. Raised at a special facility at Academia since the age of eight, Trey studied art combat to the launch of Dr. Al Rossia. Um, he participated in the liberation of the Dominion nine years later, joined Class Zero immediately afterward. Cool, calm, collected, inside and out. Trey takes pains to maintain a pristine image, lest someone find some flaw they might exploit. He is extremely eager to share his impressive breadth of knowledge with anyone within earshot. However, Trey's unfortunate audience usually tires of his endless exposition and listeners often cut him off mid-explanation. <laughs> yeah, you do. You do sound like an ear. Cater has trained at one of... <laughs> at one of... Sorcery special facilities since the age of eight. Studying how to wield Magicite pistol and cast all sorts of spells, she finally put her skills to the test in 842 when the Mil Milis Militesi Empire invaded Academia and passed with flying colors, later joined Ace and others as members of Class Hero. There is no beating around the bush with Kaya. She is very clear about what she wants and extremely confident that she can obtain it. She tends to be impulsive at times, but her honest, off-the-cuff style can be rather refreshing. Kaya hates losing, and she refuses to let anyone or anything get her down. She keeps Magicite in her knapsack to power her magic pistol, and don't even think about touching it. Machina is the only one who had like three pages. In 833, uh, Dr. Al Rasha was sent off to a special center near Academia in hopes of honing her destructive tendencies. When asked <laughs> which weapon she thought would best suit her, Sink replied, If you're gonna hit somebody, you might as well hit him super duper hard. She proved quite capable with a mace, and she was finally able to put her ability to good use during the Rubrum Liberation of A42. Official induction into Class Zero came shortly after. Thereafter, uh, Sink walks and talks to the beat of her own drum. Her lovely offbeat personality always keeps people guessing as to what stunt she'll pull next. 
In spite of her ostensible obliviousness, however, Sink is surprisingly perceptive. She will occasionally strike right at the heart of the matter, shocking those around her, without even realizing the profundity of what she said. Raised at Academia since the age of seven, Cease immediately demonstrated a prowess for combat and a dislike of socializing. Mom sought to cultivate the former and develop a rigorous training program. At the age of 16, Cease helped uh, join the Dominion Liberation Campaign and helped to reclaim Academia. And the administration officially assigned her to Clan Zero after the campaign. Foul mouthed and ferocious, Cease is quick to criticize others' shortcomings and not spare them a second thought. She loves getting bogged down by other people's problems, a firm believer in the survival of the fittest. Despite her hard exterior, however, she takes a f any affront to heart. Each and every offense fuels the flames of her vin vindic vindictive spirits spirit and driving her to fight even further okay sorcery took seven into their custody in a33 quickly discovered she possessed pro propensity for casting ice magic using these spells she made quick work with the imperial forces in winning liberation 842 and in turn secured herself a spot in Class Zero. Despite her cold appearance, actually quite nurturing, enjoys the admiration of female underclassmen, many of whom ref often refer to her as Big Sis. <laughs> Seven has a hard time saying no when asked for favors though, and this self same generosity puts more work on her plate than anticipated. Nevertheless, her reliable nature and tendency toward action are precisely why so many cadets look up. Quick on his feet, eight caught attention of Dr. I mean, I'll just call him Mom. About seven, all of the female students are in love with her. <laughs> she receives a bajillion Valentine bonus. That's so cute. Aww. I absolutely would probably hop on that train, to be honest. Quick on his feet, eight caught the attention of Mom at a young age. She escorted him to a facility near Academia where he began training his small frame and honing his skills. In that time, <laughs> A took part in the campaign to fend off against Yes, okay. Impressed with performance, Class Zero, unlike his classmates, despises all forms of weaponry because they trivial trivialize the human lives they take. He has a keen perception of everything happening around him, which allows him to make wise judgments on the fly. Even though he tries to keep his emotions in check all at all times, he also has a bit of a competitive side. It's not a height complex, though. Hoping the channel is abundant energy into something keen perception for finding traders. <laughs> Hoping to channel his abundant energy into something more protective, Mom moved nine to a facility outside, age eight. Offered him a rigorous training regimen, somewhat uncontrollable. Joined the sortie against the Imperial Army in the Rubrum Liberation of 42. Annihilated all who stood in his way. Took a liking to his tenacity and designated him a cadet. Impulsive, very intense, shoots from the hip and doesn't really worry about the consequences. In fact, he prides himself in his ability to act without overthinking. Even though some of his classmates shied him for not thinking enough, nine rebukes. However, that his seemingly rash decisions usually work out for the best, most of the time, anyway. He has a hard time dealing with situations that aren't black and white, I guess. <laughs> and he'll break whatever he needs to in order to make clear what's right and what's wrong. You know what I'm gonna say. Sorcery was quick to bring Jack in for training, sensing great potential at sorcery academics. 
at Sorcery Special Center near Academia. Jack studied the way of the warrior and he put uh, he first put his skills to the test, defending the Dominion against an Imperial assault in 842. His outstanding performance earned him a spot in Class Zero. With a smile on his face and a joke on the tip of his tongue, Jack is known as Class Clown Zero. No matter what prickly predicament he and his classmates fall into, Jack always puts a positive spin on the situation. Although his unfaltering altruism should theoretically inspire his classmates, his glib nature prevents the rest of class zero from taking his words of encouragement too seriously. I call bull. He's great. I did you no justice, I'm sorry. Mom immediately recognized impressive intellect, tender age of eight, move center, academia, train, perspective, Agito Kate. Just demonstrated particular prowess, casting lightning, employed magic skills against Empire, Liberation of 42, decision to assign her to Class Zero is unanimous. Wise young woman of inflexible integrity. Um, the uh, Queen's personality is as straightforward as the long so she feels <coughs> intolerant of all forms of injustice. Her rigid sense of morality has earned her the nickname of Class Leader. She is not Class Leader, <laughs> she will have you know. <laughs> Each character gets more pages in their profile later, and Queen is so interesting. Is that so? Yeah, it does look very interesting already. She's funny. <laughs> She's not class leader, she'll have you know. Queen tends to make harsh comments, but she bears no ill will. Yeah, I like Queen. Quiet child, he usually kept to himself. Mom, however, detected great potential in him. 33, brought him back. Mom, she's a mediator. Yes. Brought him back to Sorcery's Development Center near Academia and began training him personally. He took to combat like a chocobo to the racetrack, and he proved his prowess during the campaign. During uh, joining Class Zero after mission in 42, uh, a young man of few words, he prefers to take action rather than waste time exchanging ideas. Even in matters of life and death, he maintains his composure, making rational decisions, act upon them immediately. Some view his reticence as cool, but others misconstrue him as cold and aloof. In actuality, he's quite thoughtful. Unfortunately, however, his kindness doesn't always come across as clearly as he thinks he does. Oh, it does. Yeah, I feel like they did just a tiny bit injustice in me. No, actually, I guess that was, uh, Oh, my brain just stopped working. Chancellor Chivil serves as both headmaster of academia and chief executive of the Dominion of Rubrum, enjoyed recognition in youth as a great mage, respected, admired colleagues at present. Places great importance on order and authority, he endeavors to embody both as a model for denizens of the Dominion, radiating composure. Chancellor often makes visits to villages around the Dominion, preaching the gospel of the Vermilion Bird Christ. Her new body, Consortium of Eight, is headed by Academia Chancellor Kalia Cheval uh, Six, the Dominion's most verdant nation in Orient, boasting in the stablest climate. Where was I? Ah, using the blessing of the Vermilion Bird Crystal, her people have developed their own tools and technology. Humans are not the only denizens of Rubu. Gentle creatures such as Wiggles and Chibbles also inhabit the Dominion, peacefully coexisting with the populace. Okay. Mom. <laughs> Age Unknown Head of Sorcery Division, Most Influential Member, Consortium of Age 
the mom carries herself with an air of authority and intrigue. Ace and his classmates refer to his mother. There is no biological relation to any of them. Brilliant enough to single highly facilitate the development and improvement of domain and magic. And Hadaga has also earned a reputation for her rather brash and daring demeanor. She has maintained a powerful presence at Academia for as far back as anyone can remember. No one knows exactly how long she has held her position. Kind of reminds me of um, oh, I see a uh, can't think of her name right now. But the sorceress, Academia Tribune, and Class Zero's commanding officer, Kurosame, is a no sense, oh, no nonsense, straight shooter of a man, also known as Ice Reaper. Literally sends chills down his enemy's spines. The whole manga about Kurosawa. Holy crap, really? Dang. Yeah, I like Kurosawa. He's adorable. Frost emanating from his boreal blade. Once celebrated as one of four champions of Rubrum, Kurosawa chose to remain at Academia to help educate and assist fledgling cadets. Very certain attitude toward all students, regardless of class, a tendency that has ended, earned him the scorn of less understanding cadets. Nevertheless, he remains popular among the female portion of the student body, doubtless because of his dashing good looks. <laughs> Ah, Leader of Dominion, Legions, member of Cosorium A, quick to decide, even quicker to anger. Impulsive, explosive nature, overwhelm the colleagues, but Mom never seems to lose an argument with him. Boasts a long, extensive military career, knowledge of all military matters in Dominion. He's less proud, however, of his high blood pressure and rapidly receding hairline. I'm sorry, sir. Cadet Master serves as chairwoman of academic administration. Uh, members of all of the members of the Cursory of Eight, she is one of the most sympathetic to the cadets' cares and concerns. Well versed in Dominion history, recite dates, facts, incredible ease. Uh, Cadet Master also possesses an impressive knowledge of Ayalons, despite having only a tenth. <coughs> The affiliation with the sorcerer. Head of school. Oh, I didn't even catch any of their names. Head of Scholastic's division, the Provost is easily the most cautious and calculating member of the eight. Genius level intellect intimidates most of his colleagues, but breadth of knowledge is undeniably impressive. Many find the Provost's, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but demeanor to be condescending. But he bears no ill will. Didn't even remember that this dude had a name. <laughs> Many at Academia find the Provost's demeanor to be condescending, but he bears no ill will. He just knows himself to be better than everyone else and has no inhibitions, oh, in, inhibitions about acknowledging his superiority. Zaido. Tazuru. Chairwoman of Logistics. Commissar. Kiska. Spends a good portion of her time negotiating strategies, allocating supplies, and personnel. Appears relaxed in the mirror, but as her colleagues know, her carefully chosen words can be quite piercing when discussing important mat issues, striking right at the heart of the matter. Okay. I'll read that. You all look the same when you're not paying attention. Whew. This is actually quite small. Oh, it's big. 
big, but it feels smaller at the same time. Personally, researchers have not yet received marching orders. Not like we have ever. Wait. Not like we ever have to begin with. Sorry. Okay. Honor roll cadets. What? I'm not on here. <laughs> Report resubmission required. Hey, my name is on here. <laughs> Honor roll cadets. Let's do. It. What? I'm not on here. Oh, who's calling you? Oh, it's really a... Oh, it's you. Okay. Such a relief knowing that you guys will be marching with us. You guys are practically reruns. Good luck, Charm. I know I've got a mission briefing to go to, but this part is so intense! My CEO likes novels too, so I'm sure he'll understand if I'm a minute or two late. Oh, okay. What book you're reading there? I want to know too. Yeah. I won't be joining Sorted this time. Not like that, it's anything new. We class and I good that's really receive official mission orders. Hmm. Wondering if I should do the mission or end it here. Okay, it all depends. Okay. Just now realized that my recording has not been has not been recording so I'll probably go do that on my own time. Oh let's see my okay. Thinking of actually doing this next time, I need to go take a food break. So I think I will end it here. Thank you for watching. If you're still here, I'm not sure if you're still here. Thank you for watching. I shall end it here and begin the mission another day. Alright, goodbye.